Hi guys, I'm Josh and this is why you should read Sophie's World. So before I go into detail, my quick thoughts are basically if you have any passing curiosity about philosophy whatsoever, this book is a must read. If you are not remotely interested in philosophy whatsoever, you can probably skip this one. Okay, so I'd never heard of Sophie's World until someone bought me it as a gift this month. And ever since I finished it, I feel like I've been seeing it everywhere, all over the internet and in loads of lists of the greatest novels of all time. Does it deserve to be in a list of the greatest novels of all time? Well, let's take a look. Anyone who has read Sophie's World will tell you that it's very difficult to talk about without giving away loads of spoilers, but I'll do my best. Sophie's World, which was originally released as Sophia Sveiden in the original Norwegian, is a novel by Justein Garda about the history of Western philosophy but aimed at young teenagers. The main character is Sophie Amundsen, who is a Norwegian teenage girl who receives mysterious letters from a stranger in which he is teaching her about the history of Western philosophy. She finds the subject fascinating, but she is also fascinated by this mysterious professor and as she tries to find out who he is, he becomes even more elusive and more mysterious. But then the story changes when she starts to receive letters for another girl called Hilda, who she has never heard of. And she assumes that these must be the wrong address. But these letters describe Sophie. So these mysterious letters are talking about Sophie to this girl Hilda. And it also seems that Hilda has the exact same birthday as Sophie, which is coming up soon. Sophie attempts to use her newfound wisdom from philosophy to try and solve both of these riddles. This is definitely a book of two halves. And the first half is very informative. Lots of philosophy, history, a bit of mystery and minimal plot. The second half, the mystery starts to gather steam, things start happening, and the action really speeds up. From the reviews that I've seen online, people seem to either love the first half or the second half and be lukewarm on the other. Me personally, I much preferred the first half, which is very informative, and I think the information about philosophy is kind of the main draw of the book, and that's all in the first half. The second half, if I can be so mean almost feels like Gorda realised he didn't have much plot and quickly tried to shove some in, which lessened the, the informative side of it, which was the main draw in the first half. Okay, so what did I like? Well, this is the greatest primer on the history of Western philosophy that I've ever read. And I've read a few, all obviously non-fiction, and it's very interesting that it's done in this way. I'm someone who's very interested in philosophy, so for me, a lot of this in information was old news that I did already know, although I really enjoyed the way that it was explained here. But for some philosophers like Hegel and Kant, who I didn't know very well, I now feel like I have a much clearer understanding just from having read Sophie's World. And it doesn't clash with the story. In fact, it makes it stronger. And as the mystery unravels towards the end, the fact that she understands Spinoza and Plato and Descartes make the revelation so much stronger than they would if this was just a simple mystery story. Okay, so I love the informative side of it and I love how it uses this information to emphasise the mystery in the plot. So what are the book's weaknesses? Well, everything else, really. I mean, for one, it sounds like I'm trying to not tell you too much of the story, but really I've told you most of what it is apart from the reveal at the end. That's really as simple as the story is. It's not so much a novel that includes philosophy lectures as much as it is a series of philosophy lectures with a novel wrapped around it. And if you don't believe me, I refer to the fact that this book includes an index of philosophers and philosophical schools with the pages that they are mentioned in the book. And I don't mean that as a criticism in any way. I, I mean, I love this book, but it's true. The characters are very thin, and I feel that they are there in order to deliver information. For instance, 
Sophie is a teenage girl who receives mysterious letters from an adult male stranger in which he says he wants to teach her the history of philosophy and she just goes along with it. Which doesn't seem very realistic to me, or if it is, her character is not set up in such a way to say that she is someone who would do that. At the start of the story she's just kind of an every girl. And then when Sophie starts talking about her new philosophical ideas, her mother asks her if she is on drugs. Which is funny, but that's a very extreme reaction and I think it's just there to give Sophie a bit of conflict. But Okay, I mean I'm not a parent, but I'm a teacher and I spend a lot of time around teenagers and they do ask big questions about where we come from and what it all means and how we should live our lives and how society should be set up. That, that's perfectly normal for teenagers. It doesn't mean they're on the doobie man. And beyond that, we know basically nothing. They suggest that Sophie's parents are having marital difficulties in one line. And then it's never brought up again. It's never mentioned. It doesn't go anywhere. And I also do want to add, for those of you who've read the book, the twist at the end is not that original. I have read it in other books. But I will concede I've never read it done as well as in this book. And yet, despite all those criticisms, I think Sophie's World is a work of genius. I, I do. As I've said, I've never read a history of philosophy better than this one, with the possible exception of Bertrand Russell's A History of Western Philosophy, but no teenager's gonna want to read that. And the fact that this has been written for teenagers, I think, is brilliant. And I really hope and believe that any teenager who read this would have some curiosity and want to go off and research these subjects. It's a book that I read and it left me thinking for long after I'd finished it and I defy anyone to read it and not have a similar response. And although the plot and the characters are rather one-dimensional, they're not what it's about so that doesn't really matter. And if the story had focused a load on what Sophie's home life was like, the strengths in this book would have suffered and the book would have been less distinct. Okay, so I've given about as much information as I can about a book that's hard to describe without giving too much of it away. Hopefully if you've read this book before you might find my opinion interesting. I hope I've given you enough information to make up your own mind about whether or not you want to give this book a go, but for my money, Sophie's World is worth the read. I recommend it.